This episode, I didn't even say anything, okay, and believe okay, me, you'll see like okay. hundreds of comments down in the comments saying, David oh, is such and a, And then you know, David's gonna write a fucking essay, I can feel it coming. No, this time I'm not gonna say anything, okay, I'm not okay. gonna write anything so at all, because I didn't promise, I promise not to write. Welcome, Welcome to your favorite K-pop, K-pop show, DK News, Danny Kim, David, lots and lots of hot ass tea. First off, prop singer Hong Jin Young admits to plagiarizing her master's thesis. I'm sure David's gonna be triggered. Second, we have Boa questioned for alleged smuggling of sleeping drugs. Last but not least, this is very, very recent news. B2B's oh Irhun is investigated for marijuana use. And on to the first news. Okay, so trot singer Hong Jin Young admitted to plagiarizing her master's Thesis. On December 18th, popular trot singer Hong Jin Young put up an official apology on her Instagram confessing about her plagiarizing allegations on her master's thesis. Hello, this is Hong Jin Young. I know it's too late and there's no turning back, but I held my pen because I wanted to sincerely apologize and ask for forgiveness. Uh, on the day of my comeback with a new song, a plagiarism article made headlines. I was so scared of what to say, my mind went blank. Mm. Uh, I think I couldn't give up my greed until then. As soon as I acknowledged that it was plagiarism, I was so scared I would never be on stage again. I was trying to rationalize myself by saying the professor uh, said there was no problem uh, and I'm not going to lecture with my degree uh, because I was afraid that everything I worked for so far in my life would be seen as a lie. She continues on, uh, says she's sorry, she missed everything that she's done and she's, you know, put up a, I think a pretty sincere apology. Mm. It was handwritten as well. Now the initial plagiarism allegations arose in November uh, when a media outlet reported that there was a high possibility of Hong Jin Young having plagiarized her master's thesis. According to Copy Killer, a plagiarism checker for thesis papers, Hong Jin Young's thesis received a 74% plagiarism <laughs> what? rate. What? I, I actually submitted what? my paper yesterday and uh-huh. got like a 1%. Uh, what's the accepted range? normally well below like 10 percent at least below 10 percent yeah. okay so 74 percent is oh, like that, that you, is not you copy acceptable. and yeah. paste this shit hong Jin received all her bachelor's and master's and doctoral degrees at Tucson university which coincidentally happens to be where her father oh, is no. a professor oh, no. suspicions of preferential treatment got even deeper and at the time of the report hong Jin Young quickly denied allegations saying uh, she has simply used a lot of references mm. and that copy killer was a system that was not the standard used to check plagiarism back in 2009 mm. when she received her master's okay i looked into this and copy killer was put into a standard in 2015 apparently oh, okay. so but anyway when she uh denied those allegations a former professor at her university that was her same major uh came out and stated 74% plagiarism rate is a lie. In fact, it's 99.9% plagiarized. (laughs) And her and her father's presence as a professor at the university played a big role in her getting her degrees. Her master's and doctoral theses are all fake, is what he said. In response, Hong Xiang stated that she will return her diplomas, but also showed some mixed feelings as she claimed that was a custom back then, and now oh, she's no. being judged on today's standards. Oh no. Since the allegations in November, Hong Jin Young had quit from her TV shows. Her university has undergone investigations about her plagiarism, and they're preparing to announce their final verdict on December 23rd. Uh, the result is expected to be a cancellation of her master's uh, degree, which will automatically result in a cancellation of her doctoral degree. Um, and I guess Hong Jin Young kind of wanted to just apologize before the final nail in the coffin. She knows it's coming. Right. I think everybody knows it's coming, so she just wants to make that clear mm. before she gets that news. Mm. Uh, the Korean public opinion has been extremely negative uh, on her most uh, recent statement, even the apology. Right. Uh, some saying it's too late, some saying they want her father investigated as mm. well. Uh, meanwhile, uh, judging from a lot of comments on all K-pop, I was very surprised. The reactions from international fans seem to be uh, more mixed. Okay. Some saying she knew what she was doing, while there are others saying that she shouldn't be judged on something irrelevant to her profession. My number one question to you is, can Hong Jin-young recover from this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think plagiarism and stuff isn't that heavy compared to like the other scandals idols are getting into these days. Fans of her singing are going to still listen to her songs, uh, right. even if she has a plagiarized master's right. degree or not. She's going to be coming back soon after like a year and, you know, getting all these like apologies and programs, you know, I was immature back then, blah, 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 blah. I think the biggest thing in this case is that she in fact did not utilize her degree to make money really. She was already successful when she was getting her master's, which kind of leads me to the second question. 
What do you think the motives were for her to get her master's? Yeah, that's the question I've been thinking for the whole report. Because honestly, is, why this she... is so weird. Battery of Love, one of her early hits. That was a massive hit, and that came out. Uh, right about the time when she finished her master's, mm -hmm. she started her PhD right after mm -hmm. and finished it in 2012. So that means even after getting that massive hit, she decided to go for a PhD. At that point in her career, I don't think it's she weird. really needed. Yeah. That's something that you can probably put off later mm -hmm. if you really want to pursue that. But yeah. she did that right away. I don't know why she needs that. Yeah, the, the motives are very, very... Questionable. I think her dad um, maybe wanted her to pursue. Yeah, that's basically what happens to the sons and daughters right. of professor families. And also, like, no offense, but like a master's and PhD from Joseon University right. isn't gonna do that much. A lot of international fans were commenting about how Korea is like so focused on the title, on the education. True. Well, that is true. But that doesn't mean that people will look at you differently if you have a PhD in Chosun University. Right. In trade. Right. And you're a tra singer. Any kind of masters in Korea won't do that much for your career. Maybe a PhD. But, but even then, I think like... if you really want to be a professor, like, you need to go to America. You, you need to go yeah, overseas. That's standard. Judging from like how she basically uh, plagiarized her thesis paper and she's admitting to it, um, it doesn't seem like she's trying to learn that much yeah. as, as well. <laughs> I'm really confused. You don't fucking yeah, need that. You're fucking Hong Jin Young. You're like literally the most popular pro singer. I, I kind of want to know how the uh, students at your school are. They, they, they don't, don't care. Okay. On to the next news. Speaking of not caring, I really think people st should stop caring about this news. Mm. Boa is questioned for alleged smuggling <sighs> of sleeping drugs. On December 17th, K-pop artist Boa was called to the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office for questioning for suspicions of trying to bring in drugs from Japan under the name of an SM employee. Now that sounds pretty f***ing serious. Yeah. But the drugs included Zolpidem, mm. a prescription drug that induces sleep, mm. and uh, the drugs were caught in a custom search in Korea. Medicine coming into Korea require authorization and reporting before they are delivered, uh, yet these drugs were not reported, so that's why they got caught and they're now they're getting investigated. Right. SM Entertainment quickly put up a statement stating, Our employee received drugs at a local hospital following due procedures, uh, but was not aware that it could be a problem in South Korea. They stated that Boa was trying to take the sleeping pills that she uh, was taking in Japan since she was seeing side effects from her newly prescribed pills that she had in Korea. Uh, due to COVID, Japan had been allowing third-party representatives to receive uh, prescribed medicine, thus allowing the employee to receive the pills in Japan and send it over to Korea without of any problems. According to SM, they had no attempts to evade the law. They were told that they would be okay to send the drug as long as the ingredients list was inside the package. So they assumed that this would not be a problem. The prosecutors will decide whether to indict uh, Boa after reviewing the case. We'll probably hear about it very soon. Mm. Oddest part about this this whole thing is that Zolpidem is is not like some you know very rare drug. Right. Uh, it's actually a very widely prescribed drug in Korea for sleeping pills. According to the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety, uh, Korean doctors prescribe the drug to 1.76 million wow. patients within the span of July 2018 to June 2019. That's mm. one year, 1.76 million patients. So it begs the question why um, you know, SM try to bring this mm. over from Japan. Mm. There's literally no reason to smuggle in Zolpidem like, right. to Korea. It's like smuggling in Tylenol. Yeah. And also, if you're really trying to smuggle, you wouldn't put in the ingredients list right. for the drug. I do think the uh, employee should have double checked at the end of the day. Like this, this is his responsibility. It's, it's very sensitive issue. It's very easy mm. to be called a druggie for bringing a fucking sleeping pills. Right. That's the uh, consequences w that your artist got to face. Mm. The employee, uh, him or herself, should have been a little bit more careful in double checking. Mm. But at the end of the day, uh, probably there's just gonna be a fine. I just wish people would uh, learn a little bit more about it before just jumping to conclusions and calling her a druggie. <laughs> Which is what I'm seeing right now. Tapo is not a junkie. I know, but yeah. like, well, like, like that's what people are saying. Those people there are just like keyboard warriors at their houses. You know, have nothing better to do. You can't just say, oh, like those are losers. Well, they are losers. No. I mean, they are losers, <laughs> but.
On the other hand, B2B's Ilhun, Jung Ilhun is investigated for marijuana use. On the 21st, Channel A reported as an exclusive that the police uncovered B2B's main rapper and producer Jung Ilhun to be using marijuana uh, several times. And according to Channel A, Jung Ilhun had used cryptocurrency to purchase marijuana to evade police investigation. What's adding more to the controversy is that Jung Ilhun enlisted to the military during the police investigation. Very smart. <laughs> what, what do you mean? According to Channel A, the police found evidence that Jung Ilhun was using marijuana early this year oh. during a general illegal drug investigation. So. The police discovered through the testimonies of other drug users and tracking uh, bank transactions uh. Uh, that, That's so smart. Yeah, uh, that Jung Ilun had been smoking marijuana several times during the past four to five uh, years with his uh, acquaintances. I mean, usually most of the cases that these idols or celebrities get caught right. is because of like, not whistleblowers, but like those people that smoke with them. You know, like, right. what do you call them? Uh, your Backstabbers? Your <laughs> it's his low. Friends. Reportedly, the police found substances in Jung Ilun's hair oh. as well. So uh, you gotta uh, shave the head. Police also focused on how he purchased the marijuana and reportedly Jung Ilun sent money to a third bank account, uh, which was a broker's account. Um, uh, and the acquaintance would ex exchange the cash into cryptocurrency and would purchase the marijuana with the cryptocurrency. Police stated that Jung Ilun and his acquaintances were filed for prosecution under the allegations of illegal drug usage or distribution uh, this July. Mm. The meantime, he enlisted to the military as a social service worker this May 28th. Early 2020, he was caught and got investigated. May he enlisted right and then july he got prosecuted people are like you know you were getting investigated you know you were gonna go right. through some shit Let's might get... as well spend the time in the military yeah, I guess. <laughs> you know I what know. i mean it's just in like general, in general yeah. like if you're, if you're shit, a shit the military is a good option to just waste away well, some years we've seen a lot of celebrities <laughs> go that path many news outlets headlined it as an intentional act to evade right, police right. investigations enlisting to the military that was already going on since early 2020. on the other hand Chong and B2B's management label Cube Entertainment stated to Channel A that they didn't know anything about Jung Ilun's illegal drug investigation. Also, his military enlistment was originally planned to be during March mm -hmm. uh, and was delayed due to COVID-19, so mm -hmm. it was non-relative uh, to the illegal drug usage. Also, Cube Entertainment confirmed after asking Jung Ilun himself about the investigations after the news reports came out, and Jung Ilun admitted that it was true he was receiving investigations at the moment. But but it was a it was kind of ambiguous because he did not admit of drug usage. He admitted of investigations. Right. Cube apologized ultimately, saying that they felt heavily responsible and will actively cooperate with further investigations in the future. The Korean public, of course, did not take this lightly. Uh, and no, here are some of the most upvoted gosh. comments. B2B was a group without any kind of controversies, and that is all gone now, uh, just because of Jung Ilun. And the damage on B2B's image will be severe. Using for five years, several times, right. that's a little bit too much. Even is that the reason why you were so silent this year? Fans requested any sign of life from you and you kept silent. We thought no news is good news. Was it because of this and you were hiding from us? Shocking, really. We were looking forward to the full B2B activities, trusted and waited for you. I don't know if you'll be able to come back as a member of the full B2B group anymore. Well, this is the general sentiment from like the general public, I guess, including the haters. Uh, there are other unpopular but popular opinions at the same time. So many comments say that the timing of this report is very random and off and are claiming that the sudden reports of idle drug usage or scandals are used to cover up political controversies. Is a drug scandal from this one dance monkey important in this situation? Uh, the president's son is having an exhibition until the 23rd, and the former justice minister's wife's trial is getting postponed. Get your priorities right. Uh, the second outvoted comment said, he got investigated in May and got prosecuted in July. But why now? What are they trying to cover? Currently at the moment, the son of the president, uh, Moon, is under fire for receiving funds for his art exhibition and activities and opening his exhibition amidst the pandemic situation. Uh, the government has been very reluctant and hesitant on escalating the current social distancing measures and protocol to level three, uh, despite national consensus. And the government has just now decided to strengthen protocol starting tomorrow, not allowing any public or private gatherings that have more than five people in one space. Interestingly enough, the president's son's exhibition ends exactly on the same day of this strengthening. Also, any kind of legal trials will be postponed for the time being due to the pandemic. Thus, many conspiracies are appearing here and there. People are saying you know, the, the government is trying to cover up dirty political thingies with the, these idols. I think it's bullshit. If we really want to believe that the government is using idols 
uh, bad news to cover up shit. I would think that they would try to make news of idols that are bigger. Oh, that's controversial. Do you think people from the general public really care about Irhun like doing weed? I don't think anyone really cares. Maybe a short burst of outrage. You think my dad's gonna care? Usually when these things happen, um, my friends like share the news. Oh. They send me the news, yeah, yeah. right? That's that's how I know like, like the general public yeah, yeah, yeah. gives a shit about this Your event. Own standard. Very few of them are K-pop yeah, fans. Yeah. So if they're actually sending me this shit, then I know that like, okay, this is like some shit that's generally buzz in mm. the general public. Whereas no one sent me this. No one. No one gave a shit. I feel like if if that was the intended tactic. Um, then it definitely failed. And I just want to talk about like um, the weed discussion again. A little bit, a little bit. I know this is like a very overplayed discussion we've had, yep. debate we had on DKDK TV. Okay, he should take responsibility. Even though I, I do think legalization is the way to go, uh, I also think that he, know the, he knows the laws. He knew his repercussions. So he definitely, you know, deserves whatever is coming from for him. But I also feel like the people's comments calling him a junkie. They're, they're treating him like some, some sort of fucking meth addict. That's the thing that's most disturbing for me. People have zero will to find out about, you know, this drug. They just automatically think, assume in their head, okay, like if you do drugs, you're gonna go crazy. That's what the government tells you. So like automatically that's he did- what the government tells you. When I was growing up in school, they, they used to do that shit. They're like, oh, like if you do weed, automatically think it's like crystal meth out of your fucking mind. You can't function properly. People are making such uneducated comments about weed itself. And they're assuming that this guy is a, like a fucking meth addict. It's really unfortunate. The thing is, K-Nets or Korean public, whether if it's weed, whether if it's military, whether if it's anything, they overreact with everything. And I just think that's the internet's nature. And the internet doesn't represent like the whole public as well but it's very frustrating i get uh, i get the when, frustration when i yeah. see those kind of comments like oh he must have been hallucinating this whole time blah 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 people need to be educated on this shit i know it's illegal i know you're gonna say like oh like it's fucking like korean people don't care yeah people are can't be making such wild assumptions and ruining careers like that over such a such a mild drug. It's unacceptable as a society. I'm I think just, Danny's just like a very, very strong pro <sighs> weed. No, I don't even want legalization of weed. I just want the minimal knowledge of people not thinking about weed equals heroin and meth because that's where we're at now. I think the reason why people are not listening to pro weed people um, with these kind of cases is because if there's like a fault, we see it as a crime because it's a breaking of law in our society, then people would t intend to focus on that case itself, the breaking of law, that factor, not get distracted of going into a different route and saying, but you know, weed is not like blah, blah, blah. People don't care because you should be preaching that in a daily basis, not connected people to People do a, preach it on a daily not, basis. Not connected to like a Yo, crime scandal. So Bill Stacks preaches this on a daily basis. Yeah, and then society will sort of slowly change, yes. but uh, I, hope, I hope it does. Like, I feel like people are annoyed that, you know, when an obvious crime in Korea comes out, people are like jumping to that opportunity and saying like, but weed isn't that like bad though. And people are like, we're not talking about like the legalization or the, uh, the what do you call it? The scientific facts well, behind weed. We're talking about this dude breaking the law here. So I'm, I'm just saying people shouldn't get their jobs lost because they got a speeding ticket oh, just no, because you get a parking ticket oh you broke the law you're gonna kill people one day that happens with everything in, you speed in, in, in korean society someone's gonna die so, yeah not not, you're, not anything you're out new. of your job that, that makes no fucking sense so there you go uh we'll talk more about weed in the after show the time is here below oh i hate talking about weed oh right, let's well. not do that okay we won't talk about weed every time we talk about weed uh, everyone's automatically david such like well, you know, no, in this episode i didn't even say anything okay, and okay, believe me you'll see like okay. hundreds of comments down in the comments saying david oh, is such and a you then know, david's gonna write a fucking essay i can feel it coming no, this time i'm not gonna say anything okay, i'm not gonna okay. write anything write at all because I didn't, you promise yeah. you promise not to write i didn't even say anything this okay okay but people are still gonna come at you you know that yeah i know we won't talk about that but you can still join the after show pillow we talk yeah. about other topics uh, that interest us as well as the topics that we discuss in this dk news and you guys get to chat with us debate with us live go to patreon.com slash dkdktv for that and
we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Uh